Hey, we caught up with Michael Vandenham, the national cyclocross champion, asking a few questions about himself, the sport of cross, and what makes him tick. So, we're going to ask 33 questions, Michael, right. since 33 uh, millimeters is the maximum tire width allowed, all right? Yeah. Cool. If you had to pick one tire width, what would it be? Well, 33. <laughs> Easy enough. <laughs> and if you had to pick a tire pressure, what would it be? Oh, like one tire pressure I'll stuck with for the rest of my life. Yeah. 23, <laughs> because it's good for everything, sort of. Perfect. Uh, we know both these questions could change based on race conditions, but what's your best condition to race in? Um, I like it when it's really muddy. I think my favorite courses are a lot of the, the heavy ones over in Europe. Um, the Iowa City course is absolutely amazing for me. And hopefully, hopefully the one out here. Cool. What makes cross racing different than road and mountain biking? Oh, we have fun. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> what inspired you to get into cross? Um, my brother, actually. He was, uh, he's a former Masters 30 to... 40, 35 to 45 national champion and he was the one who kind of told me about it lived in Ottawa so when I was looking for something to do in the fall at university that's that's what I took up I did the first few races on a mountain bike then bought a cross bike and like took parts off my road bike and, and did that awesome awesome we're gonna ask you a little more cross specific questions in a second but let's get to know you a little bit better where were you born Brandon Manitoba cool. and what's your favorite childhood memory Oh, probably going to the lake. We went. We had a boat. We went to the lake all the time. My parents were farmers, but Sundays were like lake days every day in the summer. Perfect. Was there a beach at that lake that you used to go to? Yeah, beach at the lake. We'd go swimming all the time. Cool. Now, what did you do to keep yourself busy in the winter? Um. Well, normal farm kid things, snowmobiling, snowboarding behind the snowmobile because it's Manitoba. There's certainly not any hills. Tying a giant like tractor tire inner tube behind the snowmobile and whipping off snow banks. General like redneck stuff. Cool. And when it was too cold to go outside, what was your favorite movie you watched? You know, we had like a 13, we, we got a TV probably when I was 10 and then even then it was like a 13 inch one. So, I don't know, I played a lot of like NHL 2000 on the computer. Okay, cool. <laughs> Are you an iPhone or Android guy? iPhone. Cool. Uh, we're getting off topic, but what do you love about the spectators most at a cross race? I think I think everyone in cross is fairly encouraging, at least in North America. In Belgium, they kind of like laugh at you if you're not doing very well. But I like that I like that everyone's cheering for everyone in cross. There's not really you're not just cheering for your favorite person. You're impressed by what everyone's doing. And what's the most awesome costume you've seen at a cross race? Oh, I think anyone where someone does, where they dress their, their bike up as the horse and then they're like the jockey or the cowboy or something like that, those are pretty good. And I've seen some some ones where it's like, I don't even know how you can ride your bike, never mind get off it. Like people with full on dinosaur tails and stuff like that. Those are all pretty good. Uh, the only one I've maybe done is, my favorite was always the wrestler because you just wear like a pair of black bibs and that was it. And you can still sort of race, but and, not as creative. And what for the uneducated, what's a hand up? Oh, so basically a hand up is when you're in the middle of a cross race, the last possible time when you want to be drinking any alcohol or something else, someone hands it to you and you drink it because, I don't know, it's cyclocross, that's what you do. What's the nastiest hand up you ever had? Tomato juice? Chocolate milk? Yeah, one of those. Those are way worse than like whiskey. Oh, and jelly filled donut was pretty bad too. Like a full Tim Hortons big one. Do you think hand ups should be allowed in pro races? I think so. I mean, no one, no one thinks it's like a performance advantage, so why not? Like, do, do what you want. It's not going to help you. What's your perfect go-to setup when it comes to your bike? Oh, my perfect go-to setup? That's, I mean, that's a multi, multi-layered question, I guess. Um, like I said, I like it when it's muddy, so obviously some mud tires on there. I think I run my saddle high pretty low compared to most people, so you can sort of move the bike underneath you. Um, but I mean, I've been on I've been on these bikes, the Garneaus, for a version of them for the last four years. So I, I wouldn't know how to ride anything else at this point. What types of changes do you make uh, depending on the conditions? To the bike setup, just tires. That's basically it. I know sometimes people talk about like moving their seat around, but I keep mine in pretty much the same position. It's a little little lower than what you'd run a road saddle at, so you can like get your butt up off the saddle and move the bike around. Carbon, steel, or aluminum? Oh, carbon. I mean, steel, steel's cool, but and all, but for race bikes, carbon. What's your warm-up routine? Um, so I do uh, probably about 30 minutes on course. Pop on the trainer, pick my favorite song of the time, something that I would like never listen to normally, Macklemore or something like that, and then uh, spend another 20 to 30 minutes on the trainer with a little bit of threshold in there, about six to eight minutes. Great. What's your favorite cross-training activity? 
Um, probably probably just going for for runs, crosses on mountain bike trails, a little bit of trail running. I, I enjoy doing lots of like cross country skiing and hiking and stuff like that, but it's a stretch to call those cross training as much as just generally getting out and having fun. Okay, well, what about food and hydration strategy leading into a week of a race? Yeah, absolutely. Try to keep things fairly clean leading up into a race. Like sadly, I've stopped drinking just about all beer this cross season, which is a big bummer for me. I love beer. Um, but you know, simple carbs, race day, it's like gluten-free pancakes or pancakes and like rice and eggs leading up to a race. Pretty boring stuff, unfortunately. Maybe some bacon after. What's your strategy during a race? Attack immediately, sit in, feel it out? Oh, I, I always tell myself I'm gonna sit in and feel it out, but I, I like riding hard right from the gun. Do you peak at any certain point of a race or are you pretty consistent throughout? Um, I definitely get better as the race goes on. Oh, man, it's just like opening up out here. I get better as the race goes on. Probably my weakest point of my race is the starts. And then as we get further on, I, I start improving and can finish pretty strong. What's your strategy when it comes to getting across the barriers? Um, really depends on the barriers. I think there are a lot of people hopping them. There actually aren't any barriers in this course, which there's enough dismounts they don't need them. I hop them if they're up to about 35 centimeters and spaced apart, but any any higher or closer than that, and I'll, I'll be off the bike running. What, what obstacles do you think would be fun to add to a course that traditionally aren't on there? Um, so last year in a bunch of the European races, they had Toyo Tires as a sponsor, and they had like these Toyo Tire Barrier things. They were basically like half-submerged tires in the ground. Um, and it was a good one because it was like really good sponsor interaction, but also because occasionally people would mess them up and they'd get their, their, their like bike tires stuck in between these tires and they'd have to lift them out. So I thought that was pretty creative. What's the most beautiful place you ever raced? Gloucester, right on, right on the ocean. Giant rock, it's gorgeous there. What's the hardest race you've ever had? Uh, Valkenberg last year, the World Championships. It like downpoured, it's on the top of what you'd call a mountain in the Netherlands, and it was just insanely muddy. I've never run so much before. What's your favorite race recovery beverage? Race recovery, well, would say beer, but <laughs> mop that uh, milkshake, absolutely. Cool. And what should, we, what should we all do to grow the sport across? I think just um, it, it really needs to start at the grassroots level. So youth programs and getting kids into the sport, and that's that's the most important thing. I think it's an awesome it's an awesome sport, and we just like need to show more people that that it exists and show more people uh, what what can be done out here. What's the greatest innovation in cross you've seen since you've been in the sport? Oh, disc brakes. I started out racing cantilevers, no question. Disc brakes have changed how you race a cross race. What innovations would, would you like to see going forward in the sport? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, I think there's been some talk about, you know, widening the UCI tire limit. I'm sort of in favor of keeping it at 33. I think that's what one of the things that really separates cross from mountain bike. Maybe I'm a little bit of a tra traditionalist and like an old grouchy guy, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with where things are at right now for, for it. What are you going to do today after we leave? Uh, my parents are here, so I'll probably go have dinner with them, and tomorrow's the Pan Am, so basically prepare for that. After the Pan Am, though, definitely burger, fries, milkshake. The whole, you know, classic American meal, I guess. Well, thanks, Michael. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome, Mike.